Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our live coverage of the latest mission from NASA's Kennedy Space Center. I'm Will Robinson-Smith. I'll be providing our commentary for the duration of this coverage. Or Stephen Young is taking some well-earned time off this morning, but helping us remotely a little bit with some of our social media. Aaron Bernstein is manning our tracking cameras as well as doing some still photography as well for today. In the center of your screen, you're looking at a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket in the heart of historic Launch Complex 39A. Here, T minus one hour, 16 minutes, 10 seconds away from the liftoff of the Psyche spacecraft on board that Falcon Heavy rocket. Here in the pad shot, you can see the mission logo for the Psyche spacecraft just below the NASA meatball here on the Falcon Heavy rocket at the top on those payload fairings. This is a $1.2 billion mission to explore a metal rich asteroid, also named. Psyche, 16 Psyche to be specific, as it was the 16th discovered asteroid back in 1852. We'll dive much more into the mission as we go through the next couple of hours of this count. Currently, SpaceX is targeting a tier zero liftoff time of 1019 a.m. Eastern time. For our viewers joining from around the world, that's 1419 UTC. If you'd like to help support our coverage of the space program, there's a quick and easy way to do that if you just hit the like button. And subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the notification bell so you get those buzzes whenever new videos are posted and you don't miss any of our live streams. Of course, we can't do these launch broadcasts without the support of our wonderful viewers like you as well as our channel members. So big thanks to everyone who helped make a contribution to support our coverage. Becoming a channel member has multiple perks. Of course, you are able to access 4K live views of all of our launches from here at Florida Space Coast, as well as access to member-only videos and discounts to our online shop. That's shop.spaceflightnow.com. In that realm, want to thank and leaders for joining us with channel membership at the pad leader level. Happy to have you on board, Ed. Another great way to help support us is through the YouTube Super Chat feature. It's a great way to join the conversation about Psyche. Lots to talk about this morning for this one. Coming up, the liftoff, one hour, 13 minutes, 56 seconds away. want to thank uh, United Nations Space for their $2 super chat saying, I am psyched for this launch. <laughs> and of course, this is a mission that a lot of folks around the world have been watching closely, waiting for liftoff coming up in just a little over an hour from now. Of course, this mission was delayed from last October when there was a software issue that was discovered over the summer getting ready for preparations. So they decided to stand down from the launch opportunity last year, made sure everything was on track for the mission that you see standing in front of you on this screen. 
and things are trending in a much better direction. It's about 9.07 a.m. Eastern time here in what I can say is fortunately sunny Florida right now as we've had quite a few storms and heavy clouds that have rolled through the area over the last couple of days. In fact, weather was the reason that SpaceX and NASA decided to stand down from their launch opportunity on Thursday as there was only a 20% chance of favorable weather for that launch opportunity. Things were... Looking a little mixed last evening coming into this opportunity as the 45th Weather Squadron had only pegged about a 40% chance of favorable weather at liftoff. However, good news on that front. As of this morning and the latest weather briefings, the favorable weather odds have improved to 85%. So a much better outlook from a weather standpoint for the liftoff of the Psyche mission. T minus one hour, nine minutes, 51 seconds and counting. Getting some great support for this mission today. This view brought to you by our friend uh, Chuck Briggs, who's helping us track the launch as we get closer to liftoff. Again, targeting 1019 Eastern Time. That's 1419 UTC for the launch of the Psyche mission. T minus one hour, eight minutes, 37 seconds and counting. Coming up at T minus 53 minutes is the point at which the launch director will verify the go for the startup propellant load. Because this is a joint NASA and SpaceX mission, we should be getting mission audio throughout the duration of the fueling process. So if you hear a notable pause during commentary, want to be able to allow both you and I to hear updates on the fueling of the Falcon Heavy rocket. A little bit of a longer step through than the smaller Falcon 9. Talk a little bit about the fueling timeline in just a moment here. 
Earlier this year, SpaceX shifted its mission control operations to its facilities at the so-called Roberts Road site here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. It's the facility where they refurbish Falcon boosters and prepare them for flight once again. As you can see on this particular Falcon Heavy, a little bit of soot on those side boosters. Tail numbers 1064 and 1065, making their fourth flight today, supporting the Psyche mission. The pristine core booster in the middle will be expended today, making its first and only flight. For this mission, SpaceX also has support from their control room at their headquarters in Hawthorne, California. And on the NASA side of things, the mission is also being tracked and supported by the Jet Propulsion Lab in California as well. Again, this morning's launch is targeting a T-0 liftoff of 10.19 a.m. Eastern. That's 14.19 UTC. This is an instantaneous launch opportunity, so if they do not launch at that time, they have to stand down and look to their 24-hour backup opportunity. The next chance they have to launch is Saturday morning at 10.24 a.m. Eastern time, 14.24 UTC. Now, because this is a mission to an asteroid, they do have a limitation on the total length of the launch window. By that, I mean the number of days they have left to get this Falcon Heavy off the ground. That they have daily launch opportunities from now through the 25th of October. However, there are some restrictions even within that depending on how many times they fuel the rocket and go through a full mission countdown if they do have to reach the point of holding and aborting today. They can do that one more time tomorrow if they go through the full fueling and countdown procedure. Earlier this week, though, we heard from Tim Dunn, the Senior Launch Director for NASA's Launch Services Program. He explained the reason for why NASA and SpaceX can't simply just try to launch every single day during the full launch window. Here's some of that explanation from Tim Dunn. quantity of densified locks that we use for each attempt with a Falcon Heavy configuration. That's a, that's a lot of, of locks we're putting on the rocket. So we have the capability to do two consecutive attempts by, counting all the, by loading and counting all the way down to near T0. And then if we scrubbed out, we could do that again a second day. Um, and then after that second attempt, should have we uh, done that, then we would be down about five days to replenish the locks in the ground sphere and get it into a densified state. So that's where you're hearing two consecutive attempts and then there's a period of time. So obviously knowing that, uh, that constraint on the launch operations, we handle that very carefully when we make the decision about an hour before launch on whether to load that day. So we're looking at weather, we're looking at are we working a, a launch vehicle issue, a spacecraft issue, uh, so a lot goes into that. So just glancing back over the last 11 months, SpaceX has launched four Falcon Heavies. Uh, of those four, two of them went on the first attempt and the other two went on their second attempt. So uh, the two of those were um, DOD missions and the other two were commercial missions. So SpaceX has a lot of experience in handling that, especially in uh, the last year. So. Uh, it's obviously, it's a, it's a critical launch decision. We treat it with a lot of, of reverence because of the limited planetary window that we're dealing with in the big scheme. And again, that was NASA's Tim Dunn explaining the reasoning for why they can't just fuel and try to launch every single day. Now T minus one hour, three minutes, 15 seconds and counting. Teams are getting into the polling procedure for the start of fueling.
officer, Arlena Moses, that uh, the weather has improved to 85% go. Again, that's 85% go, a substantial improvement from yesterday's uh, 40, only 40% 40 go. I uh, said that the storms that were expected to be in the area moved to the south. And so we have pretty clear skies. The only concerns are some uh, possible pop-up storms and cumulus clouds. Mick, you've also been listening to the Nets as well. And um, just recently there was a report on the COLAs for this mission, the collision avoidance that uh, every mission has to go through before launching to make sure they don't run into anything. What would you hear? Yeah, Daryl, thanks for having me this morning. This has been awesome. Uh, we are getting ready for this Falcon Heavy launch with the Psyche mission. I'm so excited to be uh, doing this today. Uh, as you said, uh, the range and the launch weather uh, team uh, met and looked at the COLA uh, analysis for today's mission for our T-0 at 10:19. Uh, 43 this morning and uh, right now we have no colas uh, that are in uh, the way for us to launch so everything's looking good for our one second window uh, for launch this morning um, and as we move forward uh, the team will continue to monitor everything on the rocket uh, checking things out as they've been doing all morning uh, I actually just heard the uh, engineering team uh, do their pre-poll uh, looking at all the data for fueling as we're getting ready to come up on starting propellant load uh, from that aspect and everything is looking good so far. They have a few more checks they need to do prior to moving into that propellant load pole, but uh, so far uh, everything is nominal this morning for this mission. As we count down to a T0 at 10, 19, and 43 seconds a.m. Eastern Time or 14, 19, 43 UTC Time, the Falcon Heavy, once we start tanking, uh, will then be locked in to that and we were just taking a moment to listen in to NASA's Daryl Nail with an update. As you heard, there are no uh, colas or cutouts ahead of the liftoff for their instantaneous liftoff time at 10.19 a.m. Eastern. That's coming up in just over an hour from now, one hour, 30 seconds to be precise. Now less than an hour, T minus 58 minutes, 41 seconds and counting. Again, the pull to start propellant load will be conducted at T minus 53 minutes. As we get ready for that, let's go ahead and talk about what this mission will look like once it's in the books. A little preview of the launch stats once this is all said and done. This will be the 72nd Falcon 9 slash Falcon Heavy launch in 2023. This will be the 8th Falcon Heavy launching to date. 
the 15th landing of Falcon Heavy Boosters. The 206th Falcon reflight to date since they are reflying those two side boosters as I mentioned earlier. This will be the 270th total Falcon launching in between Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. Over the last 365 days, this is the 87th Falcon flight. This is SpaceX's 70th launch from Launch Complex 39A. The 163rd total launch from Launch Complex 39A. That includes, of course, shuttle missions as well as Saturn V rockets. And finally, this is the 56th launch from Florida in 2023. MT minus 56 minutes, 49 seconds and counting. For our T0 opportunity, uh, that was also very good news. Uh, both the uh, upper level winds and uh, recovery uh, numbers are all in line. So it looks like a, a good day, but I would like to now poll the NASA JPL Psyche team for their readiness for propellant load and launch readiness. NASA CE? NASA CE, go. SMA? SMA, go. SMD? SMD is go. NASA MIM? NASA MIM, go. LSP? LSP, go. In limb copies, the NASA Psyche team is go for propellant load and launch readiness. And there you heard the poll from the NASA Psyche end of the team. And again, the poll from the SpaceX side. Final go for propellant load. LD, this is NLM. The NASA team is ready for propellant load and continued countdown. team is go for propellant load and launch. A reminder, on abort instructions for not urgent no-go conditions, brief CERLD and it will approve aborting the countdown. For urgent issues affecting the safety of the operation, operators shall call hold, hold, hold on the countdown net. Launch control will abort the launch auto sequence immediately and proceed to the launch abort auto sequence. Finally, T minus 10 seconds, launch control will be hands off and relying on automated abort criteria for the remainder of the count. And some good updates there. Teams have been pulled and looks like we're getting ready to start the fueling process. So before that begins, let's go ahead and take a look at the timeline for the fueling here since it's, again, a little bit different than what we would normally see with a Falcon 9 rocket. So with the go given for startup propellant load, that'll begin at T-minus 50 minutes. That'll begin with loading kerosene onto the first stage of the Falcon Heavy rocket. It'll be followed five minutes later at T-minus 45 minutes, liquid oxygen starting to flow aboard the first stage. Then at T-minus 35 minutes, the second stage RP-1 or rocket-grade kerosene will begin. Then at T-minus 18 and a half minutes, liquid oxygen will start moving on to the second stage. Before that, though, we'll see the so-called big vent from the strong back at the launch as the uh, pad lines are chilled, those important feed lines. That uh, big vent should happen right about T minus 22 minutes, 30 seconds or so. At T minus seven minutes, the chill down of the 27 Merlin engines will get underway. It involves flowing a small amount of liquid oxygen through the plumbing and turbo pumps. It's important because it helps protect the engines from the risk of thermal shock and damage during the startup sequence. 
And then at T minus four minutes, 30 seconds, the strong back retract will begin. We'll start by seeing the opening of the clamp arms underneath the payload fairings. And then the transport erector or the strong back will tilt back about one and a half degrees, just leaning a little bit away from the Falcon Heavy. It'll stay there until liftoff, at which point it will pull back in a much more rapid fashion, clearing the way the climb of the Falcon Heavy off the pad for only the eighth time. In the final 60 seconds, control of the countdown will be handed over from the ground sequencer to the Falcon Heavy's onboard flight computers. At T minus 45 seconds, the launch director will verify go for launch. For this mission will be Tim Dunn, the man we heard from earlier. T minus 20 seconds, the propellant tanks will be brought up to flight pressure. The sort of the call out that the uh, venting is beginning for the start of propellant load, so that's a uh, good sign there that things are continuing to move on well. T minus six seconds. The engine ignition sequence will start, and then if all 27 engines ignite and are healthy, the flight computer will give the hold down clamps the release, and the Falcon Heavy will lift off at T0. Coming up in 51 minutes, 23 seconds and counting, T0 liftoff time of 10, 19 a.m. Eastern, that's 14, 19 UTC. The launch auto sequence has started. Now, T-minus 49 minutes, 21 seconds and counting. Fueling continues to move along well here on the Falcon Heavy rocket. Getting ready to lift off in less than 50 minutes from now. We appreciate the... More than 3,500 of you that are joining us at this point for our live commentary and coverage. If you haven't already, big favor would be if you could just hit the like button. It helps the YouTube algorithm allow for more folks to find this stream. So there's going to be a lot of interest with this one, especially locally with the return to landing site of the two Falcon Heavy side boosters. We'll have a sonic boom, a double sonic boom, as those come back to landing zones one and two over at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Comes up less than 10 minutes after liftoff of the rocket.
just a tad breezy here, as you can see by the uh, American flag waving next to the countdown clock here at the press site. But as I mentioned before, the weather conditions have improved from an outlook of only 40% favorable yesterday to now 85% favorable for liftoff. And with the fueling now underway, the teams are committing to the 1019 target liftoff of the Falcon Heavy rocket. So for whatever reason they need to hold the operations today, they would stand down from today's launch attempt and target the backup opportunity tomorrow. Now T minus 46 second, 46 minutes, 37 seconds, about a so minute and a half. You certainly are, way. Megan and Jim, and uh, good morning to you both who are looking lovely in your purple and orange <laughs> mission colors. Going to go ahead and bring down the NASA commentary for now. We'll bring that audio back up when we hear call-outs on the mission control loops. For now, T-minus 46 minutes and counting. We're about a minute away from the point at which liquid oxygen will start being loaded onto the first stage of the Falcon Heavy rocket, about five minutes into fueling of the RP-1 on the first stage. As we look forward to the launch of this Falcon Heavy rocket, let's talk a little bit about the trajectory of this mission. Of course, the Falcon Heavy will lift off from the pad at Historic Launch Complex 39A here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. It will fly in a southeast trajectory out over the Atlantic, or more easterly trajectory, I should say. The two side boosters, as I mentioned, will do a flip maneuver and make their way back to the Space Coasts in a return to landing site operation. They'll touch down at landing zone one and landing zone two over at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Side booster landing expected about 8 minutes, 17 seconds into flight. NY, PY, and center core lock load has started. That is and you hear the call out for the start of locks loading on the first stage boosters. Returning to the trajectory again, the fairing halves will jettison a little bit downrange of this map. SpaceX using one of its East Coast recovery ships to scoop up those fairing halves. Today, they're using Bob. Bob is stationed about 1,550 kilometers downrange of where the launch pad is here. The other recovery ship, Doug, it and Bob were named after former NASA astronauts Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley, the duo who flew aboard the Demo-2 mission back in May 2020. Getting a great fly around view of the Falcon Heavy rocket here. The structure that is immediately in front of the camera there, now on the left hand side of your screen, that is the tower that will support future Starship operations here at the pad. Of course, SpaceX still working towards its, its second integrated test flight of its Starship vehicle. TBD on exactly when that will happen as there's still some regulatory reviews that are outstanding that it needs to make its way through before that second flight. Of course, eventually SpaceX's Starship will launch from Florida supporting the Artemis mission as 
the Starship is the human landing system vehicle that will be used to bring humans down to the moon's surface for Artemis missions 3 and 4 at the very least. Now T minus 42 minutes, 43 seconds and counting. We're a few minutes into the locks loading. About seven and a half minutes into RP-1 fueling. Coming up at T-minus 35 minutes, the second stage RP-1 loading will begin. And again, that'll be followed up at T-minus 18 minutes, 30 seconds for second stage locks loading. T minus 41 minutes, 42 seconds and counting. Some nice helicopter views again from the pad here at Launch Complex 39A. The tower that you see there on the right hand side of your screen, of course, supporting both crew and cargo missions using SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft. Currently, SpaceX is in the process of building a similar tower over at its other pad that's over at Space Launch Complex 40. And taking a look at the bottom of the boosters there, you can see some venting from the vehicle as fueling continues to get underway. taking a quick second to listen here you can see or hear some of the sounds of the venting from the rocket as both rp1 and liquid oxygen start to flow on this three booster vehicle getting ready to fly for only the eighth time in spacex history let's listen in for a second T minus 39 minutes, 47 seconds and counting. As we've been talking quite a bit about SpaceX and the Falcon Heavy vehicle, of course, this is also principally a NASA mission. So let's talk a little bit about the Psyche spacecraft, the Psyche mission. Here's a view of the Psyche spacecraft while it was in the clean room of Astrotech in Titusville, Florida, ahead of its encapsulation into the Falcon Heavy payload fairings. After launch, Psyche will spend the next couple of hours getting configured to communicate with the ground stations here on Earth. Right after payload separation, the spacecraft will autonomously power up its miniature inertial measurement unit, or MIMU. That will allow it to figure out if it's rotating or not following spacecraft deployment, and that instrument will help stop any rotation before the solar panels begin deployment. Then about five minutes after spacecraft separation, Psyche will turn on its low-gain antenna. Because Psyche is still close to Earth after it is separated from the Falcon Heavy upper stage, the deep space network could potentially pick up the spacecraft somewhat quickly. Taking a look here on an animation of what that unfolding process looks like. According to the 
mission's primary investigator, Dr. Lindy Elkins-Tanton. The derotation process along with solar array deployment should be done about 21 minutes after spacecraft separation from the Falcon Heavy upper stage. Putting that in terms of the countdown clock, that would be around T plus one hour, 23 minutes or so. Once the solar arrays are deployed, Psyche will spin along its long axis to turn toward the sun. Dr. Elkins-Tanton estimates that process should be completed within about 42 to 70 minutes after spacecraft separation, or roughly T plus one hour, 44 minutes, to T plus two hours and 12 minutes. After that, the spacecraft will enter a so-called planned safe mode as it awaits ground communications. The body of the spacecraft will begin rotating to find Earth with its low-gain antenna in what Dr. elkins Ten and others refer to as the, quote, rotisserie mode, which I know it's only 942, but kind of makes me a little bit hungry. All told, this could take roughly three hours after liftoff to establish a connection with Psyche or about two hours after spacecraft separation. This is a still image of an artist's rendering of Psyche in its mission configuration here. Now T-minus 36 minutes, 46 seconds and counting. Taking a look back at the Falcon Heavy rocket as fueling continues on. We're about a minute and a half away from the next step in the fueling process beginning, that being the second stage RP-1 loading. Again, that's at T minus 35 minutes. Jim, we are still green for weather and range, which is great news as you look at an orbiting Taking a look inside Mission Control there. Stage two RP-1 load has started. And there you are the call out. T minus 34 minutes, 52 seconds and counting. Second stage fueling now has begun. T minus 33 minutes, 32 seconds and counting. Also getting some tracking support from our friend Pete Carson. So really appreciate him for lending his uh, tracking cameras for us for now. The 
T minus 32 minutes, 48 seconds and counting. Coming up on the final half hour of the countdown procedure here. Talked a little bit about the spacecraft and its immediate post-launch operations, getting ready to be in a configuration that will allow it to continue on for the rest of the mission. And of course, its goal is the asteroid that it shares the name with, 16 Psyche. Right now you're taking a look at an artist rendering of what researchers believe Psyche looks like, but they don't actually know. This image was created by a visual effects artist who's worked on several projects, and it's based off of data and observations that researchers and scientists have about Psyche. It gave it to him. He came up with this rendering of what he believes Psyche to look like. Some of what we do know about Psyche, though, it has roughly the surface area equivalent to the state of California. It's believed to be a metal-rich body consisting of mainly nickel and iron. And there's a number of theories about what Psyche could be. The prevailing one, though, is that it was a molten core that had its rocky mantle stripped off at some point in the past. NASA believes there's only nine such metal asteroids in our solar system, Psyche being the largest of those, which is a big reason for why it was chosen as the destination for this mission. Talking a little bit more about what Psyche could be made of and what the surface might look like once the Psyche spacecraft is close enough to use its optical cameras to get a picture of it. We did hear from uh, the primary investigator for the Psyche mission, Dr. Lindy Elkins Tan, earlier this week, explaining what she thinks all this looks like. We know that its density is very high. We know the shape of the reflected light off of its surface and the way radar uh, interacts with it. So we're quite confident that it is largely made of metal along with something else. That something else might be rock, it might be sulfur-based, it might be carbon-based. We don't know. And that is really the excitement of this. Um, one of the things that we on the team, and in fact the whole scientific community, have been asking ourselves now for a long time is, what do we think it's going to look like? What are the scientific motivations? So, you know, scientifically motivated ideas. One of the key ones is, what does a crater look like into metal? You know, we've seen craters into rock, like on the moon and Mars, and into ice. Uh, and of course, we've seen craters on the Earth, but we've never seen craters into metal, except for little tiny ones in test apparatus. One thing that happens when there's a high-speed crater is that a, a cup is formed, and there's a ejecta that sprays upward. And when it's a rocky crater, that ejecta just falls down again on the outside. But sometimes with metal craters in the lab, that ejecta actually freezes before it falls. And so we think that with small craters on Psyche, there actually could be little spires or spikes. And then there would be ejected little pieces of metal that might form almost a metal sand on the surface of the body. So that's one idea that we have. We're very excited to see, hopefully, some large craters on Psyche as well. Another one is that. Uh, way back 4,568 millions of years ago, at the beginning of our solar system when Psyche was formed, it was hot and liquid. And uh, it might have had volcanic eruptions onto its surface. And there's a whole geochemical story behind this, which I'm not going to get into in this moment. But to say that it seems highly likely that it might have had sulfur-rich eruptions from volcanoes, or at least from fissures, when it was very, very young. So maybe today we would see the remnants of those flows on its surface. There also could be giant cliffs as it shrunk, as it froze. And so would we see spiky metal craters, huge cliffs? Would we see old, eroded uh, lava flows that would be greenish yellow from their sulfur content? This is our scientifically motivated idea, almost certain to be completely wrong. It's going to surprise us when we get there. We're going to find out that our, our basic scientific understanding is going to be updated, and that's why we need to go. So that's the real excitement for me. We don't know what it's going to look like. We're going to be surprised. We're going to learn something new about a, a fundamental building block for rocky planets, that is their metal cores, 
It's as if the earth was a cake. It had been all mixed up and heated and made into its final cake, and we don't know what the flour and the eggs and the butter are. So we're going to go meet one of those ingredients when we go see Psyche. And again, that was Dr. Lindy Elkins Tanton, the primary investigator for the Psyche mission. Now T minus 27 minutes, 40 seconds and counting. The next step in the fueling process here again is locks loading starting on the second stage of the Falcon Heavy rocket starts at T minus 18 minutes, 30 seconds. Before that though, in just about Oh, about five minutes or so, we'll see the so-called big vents coming from the strong back there at the pad. Good visual indication that things are moving on track. You can see a lot of venting coming from the rocket as fueling continues to get underway. T minus 26 minutes, 24 seconds and counting. Taking a peek at the live chat, want to thank Jen Hernandez for joining us with channel membership at the pad leader level. Really appreciate the support, Jen. Thanks for being with us this morning. Again, as a reminder, our channel members have access to our member only videos as well as 4K live views of all of our launches that we cover from here on Florida Space Coast as well as discounts to our online merch shop. That's shop.spaceflightnow.com. A T minus 25 minutes, 50 seconds and counting. Another great way to help support us in addition to channel membership or making a YouTube super chat and joining in the conversation. It's quick and easy just by hitting the like button here on the stream. Helps more people find our live coverage. Allows the YouTube algorithm to do what it does. And as we get down to the last 25 minutes of the count for a Falcon Heavy launch, I'm sure there's a few folks out there who would like to join us. So hitting the like button is a great way to help bring this coverage to more people. And as we were just talking about the Psyche Asteroid 16 Psyche, It is an asteroid in the main asteroid belt. In fact, it's closer at times to Jupiter than it is to Earth. So it's going to take quite a long time for the Psyche spacecraft to reach it. In fact, it won't arrive until summer of 2029. Taking a look here at a good sort of visual map and guidelines for the stepping process for the Psyche spacecraft as it makes its way out to Psyche. It'll make a Mars gravity assist in May of 2026, again before it is able to approach Psyche in August of 2029. Once it's there, it'll spend about 26 months conducting science operations doing various types of observations. Unlike another just somewhat recent uh, asteroid mission, the OSIRIS-REx mission, which did take a sample of asteroid Bennu, Psyche will not be touching down on the surface of asteroid uh, Psyche, 16 Psyche. This will be purely observation from a distance, although it will go down to multiple orbits. It'll be in about four different orbits over the course of those 26 months as it uses its various instruments to take readings of the Psyche asteroid. A couple of the tools it'll be using once it's closer to 16 Psyche are the spacecraft's magnetometer, which will be trying to see if Psyche does in fact have 
an ancient magnetic field, which could be an indication that Psyche was once the core of what could have been a planet before it was stripped down to just being the core. Also on board Psyche, the gamma ray and neutron spectrometer. It's important because it helps the scientists to determine the chemical elements that make up the asteroid, something that'll be used once Psyche makes its closest approach to its namesake asteroid. I want to thank uh, Paula RB for joining us at the pad leader level. Appreciate you supporting us with membership as well as Kellen526, one of our regular folks joining us for live launch coverage. Really appreciate the uh, super chat support there, Kellen. Glad to have you with us again. Now T minus 22 minutes and counting. Seeing the start of the big vent there on the screen. Taking a look from the helicopter view that is circling the Falcon Heavy rocket, a great vantage point that we don't always get to see from uh, ground-based cameras, a good wraparound view of the transporter erector or the strong back as that big vent process gets underway. Coming up in just a few minutes, the start of locks loading on the second stage will begin. At T minus 18 minutes, 30 seconds. That'll be the last big fueling step that has yet to begin as we get closer to the T0 liftoff of the Falcon Heavy coming up at 1019 Eastern Time, 1419 UTC. Now, currently T minus 21 minutes, five seconds and counting. And a T minus 20 seconds or 20 minutes, nine seconds and counting. We heard the call out that stage two RP1 load is complete. Now coming into the final 20 minutes of the count. T minus 19 minutes, 20 seconds and counting. Less than a minute away from the start of locks flowing onto the second stage of the rocket. Should see the big vent end right about then or a hair before. This will be the first time that NASA's launch services program is using a Falcon Heavy for a mission. Stage two lock load has started. And there you hear the call out that liquid oxygen now flowing onto the second stage of the Falcon Heavy rocket. Again, this is the last outstanding fueling step that was left to be kicked off. Now underway. T minus 18 minutes, four seconds and counting.
You can see also here that the big vent is wrapping up. Still quite a bit of uh, vapor there at the pad. And as I was mentioning, this is the first time that NASA's launch services program using a Falcon Heavy for launch. Taking a look at the business end of the rocket, these are the 27 Merlin engines that power the first stages of the vehicle. Just to reiterate again, they will be expending the core stage of this Falcon Heavy rocket, but the two side boosters will come back for a return to landing site landing. So for all the folks who are in the Space Coast area, possibly a little farther into Central Florida as well, you may very well hear the double sonic booms as the boosters come back for that land landing. So if you know some folks that are in the area that may not be paying super close attention to this launch, you may want to give them a bit of a heads up before that uh, gives them a bit of a spook on a Friday morning. Now T minus 16 minutes, 33 seconds and counting. minus 16 minutes, six seconds and counting. Taking a quick peek at the live chat. Do you want to thank Brad Hedinger and SG for $5 super chat donations? Really appreciate the support for our coverage this morning. Brad saying that uh, loves what we do here at Space Flight Now. Thank you for your dedication packet and passion. Thank you, Brad, for your support. Really appreciate you being with us this morning. As well as the more than 9,000 of you who are watching live, if you haven't already, big way to help us out in addition to channel membership and those super chat donations. It's quick and easy. It's also free. You just hit the like button. It allows more people to find our coverage. Now T minus 13 minutes, 53 seconds and counting. As I mentioned, this will be the eighth time that SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket has taken flight. Let's take a moment now and step back through time, take a look at some of the history of this particular launch vehicle. Not the one distinctly that's flying today, but the overall Falcon Heavy program to date. Made its debut launch back on February 6, 2018 with a demo mission as the Tesla Roadster launched aboard the Falcon Heavy.
next flight came the following year. That was Arabsat 6A on April 11th, 2019. There would be one more Falcon Heavy launch that year. That was the U.S. Air Force's STP-2 mission that came on June 25th, 2019. Falcon Heavy didn't launch again until last November, November 1st, to be specific, on the USS F-44 mission, its first classified flight. And that was actually the beginning of the journey for these two side boosters that are flying today. They made their maiden voyage on the USS F-44 mission back in November. They flew again on USS F-67 this past January 15th. The next Falcon Heavy mission was Viasat 3. That was on April 30th. Not with these boosters, as that was a fully expendable flight that used the full power of the Falcon Heavy rocket. So all three boosters were expended on that mission. And then finally, there was the Jupiter 3 mission for Echo Star. That launched back on July 28th, 2023, the last time these boosters were in action. Coming back again here with the Psyche mission. The next time they will fly will be potentially later this year supporting the USSF-52 launch. And then they will come back one last time for their sixth and final flight supporting another important NASA discovery mission. That is the Europa Clipper set for next October. And again, that will be another flight that will be a fully expendable Falcon Heavy rocket. So all these boosters will fly for their last time. Of course, the core stage will make its first and only flight. Now T minus 10 minutes, 18 seconds and counting. Starting to see a little bit more cloud cover come into the area here. Something, of course, that is continuing to be tracked. as we come into the final 10 minutes of the count. And as we're getting close to the potential liftoff of the Falcon Heavy rocket, again, now nine minutes, 20 seconds away from its planned liftoff time. Let's go ahead and talk about the timeline of events after liftoff. Again, liftoff nine minutes from now at 1019 Eastern Time, 1419 UTC. T plus one minute, nine seconds, the Falcon Heavy will pass through the greatest point of aerodynamic pressure on the rocket known as Max Q. At T plus two minutes, 25 seconds, the side booster main engines will cut off, known as BECO. A few seconds later, the side boosters will separate and the boost back burn on those side boosters begins at T plus two minutes, 40 seconds. Boost back burn will end at T plus three minutes, 51 seconds. At T plus three minutes, 55 seconds, the main engine on the core stage booster will cease firing. That is uh, Miko. At T plus three minutes, 59 seconds, the first and second stages will separate, followed at T plus four Center minutes. Center core RP1 load is complete. And you hear that call out for another step of the fueling process checked off. T plus four minutes, 24 seconds, the payload fairings will deploy. Again, they'll be recovered by the recovery ship Bob today. At T plus six minutes, 47 seconds, the side booster entry burn begins. Followed up at T plus seven minutes, four seconds, that entry burn will end. T plus eight minutes, the landing burn starts. 
the side boosters will land again at landing zones one and two at T plus eight minutes, 17 seconds. At T plus eight minutes, 26 seconds, the second stage engine cutoff will occur Seco one. Then the upper stage enters into a coast phase until... PY, RP1 load is complete. The second stage engine starts again. That's SES2 at T plus 54 minutes. That burn will last just a little over two minutes, cutting off at T plus 56 minutes, 12 seconds. And then finally, at T plus one hour, two minutes, 24 seconds... Engine chill has started. The Psyche spacecraft will deploy. Near the call out, that engine chill is now underway for the Falcon Heavy rocket. Here's one little look at the mission patch for today's operation, the Psyche mission to asteroid Psyche. Now just over six and a half minutes to lift off. Taking a quick peek at the live chat, want to thank Charles Lane for $5 Super Chat and also Stephen Ross for a $50 Super Chat. Really appreciate the the support from the both of you. NY RP1 load is complete. Thank you so much for supporting our coverage at that level to the both of you. Really, really thank you for helping to power what we do and help to improve some of our technical capabilities here as we are working okay, on uh, and I'm good to run that now bringing more technical prowess here upgrading our ability to stream everything in 4k and the super chat donations go a long way toward that process so thank you again thank you to everyone who has been watching so far to the 14,500 of you watching live thanks for being with us if you haven't already, in the last five minutes, if you could hit the like button, help just a few more people find our coverage. That would be very much appreciated as we get ready to see the eighth launch of a Falcon Heavy rocket supporting NASA's mission to the asteroid Psyche using the spacecraft of the same name. At T-minus five minutes. Spacecraft is on internal power. Ten seconds and counting. You hear the uh, spacecraft now powering up, getting ready for flight in just over five minutes. Vehicle tanks are pressing for Strongback Retract. That Strongback Retract is going to begin in just the next few seconds here. You'll see those clamp arms open just beneath the payload fairings. This view here again brought to us by Pete Carson's. Really appreciate Pete helping us out with coverage today. Strong back retract has started. You hear the call out for retract beginning. Again, those clamp arms going to be opening up, allowing for the transporter rector to tilt away from the Falcon Heavy rocket. Here's a close up view of those payload fairings with a very precious payload on board. Psyche spacecraft mission clocking in at an estimated cost of about $1.2 billion. Now T minus four minutes and counting. LD, NLM, countdown net. LD. The NASA Psyche team is go for launch. Copy, go for launch. And you're a great call out there. The NASA Psyche team on their side of the board, they are go for launch. NY lock float is complete. At T minus 45 seconds is when we will hear the SpaceX launch director give their verification. PY lock slot is complete. For a go for launch. And with that call out, lock loading is complete. The Falcon Heavy now fully fueled. And raring to go. Now T minus 3 minutes, 10 seconds and counting. Center core lock slot is complete. I want to give a quick thank you to a couple other Super Chat donations, Raymond Rogers and Christopher Sen. Really appreciate the both of you helping to support our coverage, as well as uh, Joseph Johnson for joining with uh, channel membership at the pad leader level. Really appreciate all of you for joining us today and for helping to support our coverage.
Really appreciate it. Goes a long way towards helping us do what we do here at Space Flight Now. Now, T-minus two minutes, 34 seconds and counting to the liftoff of NASA's Psyche mission to explore a metal-rich asteroid for the first time. Stage two lock load is complete. You hear the call out, stage two lock load complete. Apologies on that, jumped the gun a little bit on call out that the uh, Falcon Heavy was fully fueled. It is now fully fueled. As we are now less than two minutes away from lift off of the Falcon Heavy rocket. Those feet lines are now being purged. That's the venting you're seeing from the strong back. About a minute and a half to lift off now. Gas launch close out. Give you one last view from the press site here as the countdown clock ticks down to the one minute mark. Falcon Heavy is in startup. We are now 55 seconds to lift off of the eighth Falcon Heavy launch to date. Go for launch. You hear the SpaceX launch director giving the go for launch. Now 40 seconds to lift off. Thirty seconds. Less than thirty seconds to lift off now. Fifteen seconds. And here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Engine ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of the 8th Falcon Heavy rocket supporting NASA's Psyche mission. Off to explore a metal-rich asteroid for the very first time. Call the vehicles pass through max Q, the point of greatest aerodynamic pressure on the rocket. Now one minute, 20 seconds into flight. Now one minute, 40 seconds into the mission. Coming up at T plus 2 minutes, 25 seconds, we'll see the side booster engine cut off. About 30 seconds from now.
booster engine cut off. And you hear the booster engine cut off, and you see confirmed. separation on your screen. Boost back start up. MVAC engine chill has started. A lot of things moving quickly here. T plus 2 minutes 49 seconds and counting. Those boosters making their way now back to Florida for a return to landing site landing at landing zones 1 and 2 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, just a little bit away from where they took off just three minutes ago. No T plus three minutes, 31 seconds and counting. The boost back burn should be ending in a little less than 10 seconds from now. Boost back shut down. And you hear that call out there? Main engine cut off. You hear Miko. Stage separation confirmed. We should see. There we go. Stage separation visually on the screen. MVAC ignition. And the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage Access of the Falcon Center Heavy core rocket. Center core FTS is saved. Bermuda. Now coming to life. Bearing separation confirmed. Taking a look now at an empty pad here and see fairing separation confirmed as the Psyche spacecraft now exposed to the vacuum of space for the very first time. Vehicle is on a nominal trajectory. Now coming up on five minutes into flight. Again, in the next few minutes, as the boosters make their way back down toward Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, you should be hearing a double sonic boom as they re-enter. No T plus five minutes, 40 seconds and counting. The side booster entry burn is getting ready to start in just a minute away from now. T plus six minutes, 47 seconds. We're continuing to uh, track the skies here over Florida. Waiting to bring you good visual of those boosters as they make their way back down toward land. Now T plus 6 minutes, 14 seconds and counting. About 30 seconds away from the side booster entry burn beginning. We should get a visual on that soon. Take a look at the Merlin vacuum engine continuing to power the Falcon Heavy upper Here's stage. Burn Near the call out for the entry burn beginning. Keeping an eye out for those boosters scanning the skies here over Florida. Boosters entry burn shut down. And the entry burn shutdown has concluded. The landing burn will begin at T plus eight minutes. About 45 seconds from now. PYNY FTS is saved. Taking a look at some of the uh, thick clouds over Florida. 
as uh, everyone is scanning the skies for stage two is on a nominal trajectory next 30 seconds in which the boosters will begin their landing burn boosters transonic those boosters now transonic traveling stage two and terminal guidance There you see those boosters coming home. Boosters landing confirmed. And we heard a good call out and we can see that on your screen. And back shut down. <laughs> and boy, we can feel it here at the uh, press site. Those boosters two FTS is saved. are very much now back on the and there's the uh, the second rumble, a little bit of a delay here at the press site. Those boosters. Nominal park orbit insertion. Now very much back on land, as you can see here on your screen. T plus nine minutes, five seconds into flight. Getting some nice onboard views. There it is. That is the Psyche spacecraft angling with the sun overhead. It's about nine and a half minutes into its multi-year journey. Here's a, a shot of the trajectory map from SpaceX, keeping eyes on the flight path of the Falcon Heavy upper stage as well as the Psyche spacecraft. Now T plus nine minutes, 47 seconds and counting. The second stage is in a coast phase until the second stage engine comes back to life. That Merlin vacuum engine will fire again for about two minutes, 12 seconds at T plus 54 minutes is when that will begin. Now T plus 10 minutes, 13 seconds and counting. So you take a look back over at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station over at landing zones one and two. Now the camera on the vehicle assembly building doing a little bit of a, a whip pan motion. So we're going to pivot away from that for a moment. Expected loss of signal, Bermuda. Now T plus 11 minutes and counting.
No T plus 13 minutes, 10 seconds and counting. Apologies, stepped away for just a second, and apparently that was just the wrong second. Do want to thank, taking a look at our live chat real quick, a couple of the Super Chat donations missed during all the action of launch and landing. QC Part-Time Paranormal, appreciate you for your $2 Super Chat donation, saying, let's go! Scrolling on down. Thank you to SG for your $10 Super Chat donation. SG, one of our regulars, joining us again for live launch coverage this morning. Really appreciate you being with us, SG, as well as one of our channel members, Josh King, with a $10 Super Chat donation. Really appreciate the support there, Josh. As well as Versailles making a $70 Super Chat donation. Really appreciate the uh, support, Versailles little CA, so maybe some love from California. Golden State, my home state. So if that is where you're checking in from, Versailles, I really appreciate you and, and the rest of the folks who have chipped in with Super Chat donations during our coverage as well as uh, oh, Versailles, uh, I missed uh, your earlier one. Uh, $3 Super Chat donation saying, go Falcon Heavy, Psyche 16, we love you. A couple of uh, cute emojis there with a falcon and yes we did get a successful launch as well as the landing of the two side boosters again those will be turned around and refurbished and fly again before too much longer on the USS F-52 mission for the U.S. Space Force and then they will make their final flight coming up next October supporting NASA's Europa Clipper a mission to the Europa moon of Jupiter. And thank you as well to TYJ Logistics LLC for your $20 Super Chat donation saying f great coverage. Really appreciate you helping support that coverage as well as all of our channel members and everyone else who has been a great part of supporting what we do here for many years at space flight now we can't do it without all of you and now nasa is doing something that it has never done before which is going off to explore a metal ridge asteroid for the first time 16 psyche it will be arriving to that asteroid in the late summer of 2029 it'll have a mars flyby before that in 2026 but even before all that there is a rideshare that's come along board for a bit of extra fun for this mission. It is nickname or is uh, its acronym is DSOC. It is the Deep Space Optical Communications. It's a the first time that NASA is testing optical communications beyond the moon. Proof of concept for technology that can help support communications for say. Mars missions down the road in the future. The demonstration will begin shortly after launch and continue in two phases for about two years, with the first phase of operations lasting until June of 2024. Second phase planned from January to October of 2025. One other thing we're seeing here on this mission for the first time, taking a look there at uh, JPL control room. Obviously relieved to see the mission going as well as it has so far. NASA will also be making its first use of ion thrusters in a deep space mission here. There's a look of what the thruster looks like both on board the spacecraft as well as in a test operation. That's where you see the ionized particles on the left-hand side of your screen. They'll only provide as much thrust as 
about the weight of three quarters in your hands. So not very much when you sort of put it in those terms, but it is enough that using the solar panels on board the Psyche spacecraft will be able to propel it all the way out to 16 Psyche. Again, in the asteroid belt closer to Jupiter, oftentimes than it is to Earth, so it will take quite a long time moving up just a little bit on the slower side, but, you know, they say slow and steady wins the race, and spacecraft will get off to 16 Psyche just as soon as it can. Again, with that Mars flyby supporting that operation coming up in 2026. No T plus 18 minutes, 58 seconds and counting. Taking a quick look at the live chat, do want to thank uh, TD Sports Cards for your $5 super chat, saying another amazing flight. I agree, the uh, eighth time a Falcon Heavy launched. Now taking a look at the empty launch pad there at Launch Complex 39A. Hallmark of a successful mission now that the Rocket has successfully lifted off its boosters back down at landing zones 1 and 2 over Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. And the upper stage in a successful parking orbit getting ready for its second burn in just a little over 30 minutes. Now T plus 20 minutes, 7 seconds and counting. Do you want to thank Ocho Chicho as well for your $2 Super Chat donation? Saying uh, yum moon pies, thank you. Not entirely sure what the moon pie reference is, but uh, do appreciate the support there. A little bit early for, for moon pies in, in my mind as uh, someone who lived in Mobile, Alabama for few years and still has a lot of family and friends there. I always think of moon pies and Mardi Gras. Or the moon pie drop on uh, New Year's Day. Now T plus 21 minutes and counting into this mission. T plus 21 minutes, 22 seconds and counting. Comment from one of our channel members, Divine Respect, saying, awesome flight, post replay later for those who missed the launch. We will definitely have that replay coming up later on. Got some great views of this launch and we will be sure to have that up on the YouTube channel a little bit later on today. Apparently, Moon Pie is Sheldon Cooper's nickname in the Big Bang Theory, showing that I'm uh, not a very loyal viewer of that show, and I must confess have only watched maybe a handful of episodes. As far as sitcoms of that era of TV go, I was more of a Scrubs guy myself, but that's just me. Now T plus 22 minutes, 25 seconds and counting.
Acquisition of signal, Gabon. MT plus 26 minutes, 7 seconds and counting. We'll be getting intermittent views of the Falcon Heavy upper stage, taking a look at the Asaki spacecraft there above Earth as they coast towards the coast of <coughs> the southern continent or the tip of the the southern tip of the African continent, I should say. a view of the trajectory of the upper stage as it continues its parking orbit, getting ready for second burn of that Merlin vacuum engine coming up just a little bit here. SES2 at T plus 54 minutes on the dot. As you mentioned, this was the eighth launch of a Falcon Heavy rocket. Noteworthy that of those eight, four happened just this year. So the era of the Falcon Heavy seems to be very much upon us now these days. Now T plus 27 minutes, 55 seconds and counting.
Hitchcock. Now T plus 30 minutes, 13 seconds and counting. Just about 24 minutes away from the second stage engine, second burn.
No T plus 35 minutes, 35 seconds and counting. Less than 20 minutes away from the second stage engine burn for the second time.
suspected loss of signal, hard to be stuck. Now T plus 44 minutes, 11 seconds and counting. We're about 10 minutes away from the second stage Merlin vacuum engine coming back to life for a burn that'll last two minutes, 12 seconds. Again, that starts at T plus 54 minutes. This will be the final burn before spacecraft separation coming up at T plus one hour, two minutes, 24 seconds. Acquisition of signal, reef.
Acquisition of Signal, Western Australia. Come back, engine chill, burn two. No T plus 50 minutes, 29 seconds and counting. Coming up on the start of the Merlin vacuum engine second burn, coming up at T plus 54 minutes. That burn will last just 2 minutes and 12 seconds before it cut off, setting up Psyche spacecraft deployment at T plus 1 hour, 2 minutes and 24 seconds. MVAC ignition, burn two. Now T plus 53 minutes, 49 seconds and counting. You see the MVAC engine coming to life one last time. This will set up the Psyche spacecraft deployment less than 10 minutes from now.
and back shut down. Now, T plus 56 minutes, eight seconds and counting. Here the call out for MVAC shutdown. Nominal payload deploy, orbit insertion. Last big movement before the payload is deployed, the Psyche spacecraft itself. That's coming up at T plus one hour, two minutes, 24 seconds. You saw the uh, trajectory map there for just a moment. There's the Psyche spacecraft itself. Both spacecraft and the Falcon Heavy upper stage are just off of the western coast of Australia currently. Now T plus 59 minutes, two seconds and counting, as we are just minutes away from the deployment of the Psyche payload. Acquisition of signal Tasmania. Taking a look at onboard views of the Psyche spacecraft there on the right hand side of your or on the center of your screen. This is what the payload looked like before it was encapsulated into the payload fairings that helped deliver it safely to its current escape orbit now, getting ready to deploy. And this is what that deployment sequence will look like as it begins to unfurl its solar arrays a little bit into the flight. Acquisition of signal, Guam. Now T plus one hour, eight seconds and counting. Just about two minutes away from spacecraft deployment. As we mentioned before, uh, the solar array deployment in real time will happen about 21 minutes after separation, or about T plus one hour, 23 minutes, give or take. Unfortunately, there won't be live views of that process happening, so 
we'll have to uh, just project forward from these animations here from NASA. And that's what the spacecraft will look like once it is fully deployed in its flight configuration. Of course, teams will continue to track the progress of Psyche as it gets its various pieces and parts configured for signal acquisition. Acquisition of signal, Hobart. We are now less than a minute away from spacecraft deployment. Psyche payload separation confirmed. And there you go. Psyche is now on its way. NASA's $1.2 billion mission to explore a Metal Ridge asteroid of the same name. Now gently drifting away from the Falcon Heavy upper stage following a successful eighth mission for the Falcon Heavy. Psyche now going to check out a Metal Ridge asteroid for the first time for NASA. One of only nine known in our solar system. smooth sailing to Psyche as we continue to see it drift away, beginning the process of getting its low gain antennas situated after it stops whatever spin it might have from the spacecraft's perspective. Getting ready to deploy those solar arrays in the next within the next couple of hours. As you mentioned, that'll be about 21 minutes after separation here. Point those towards the sun and get ready to start its seven-year mission. With Psyche no longer in view, going to go ahead and bring us back down here to Earth and start to bring this live stream to a close. Really want to thank all of you who have been with us throughout this uh, live coverage. As you see, the uh, countdown clock has frozen here as we are getting ready to close things out for our live coverage. Really want to thank all of you who have been with us for the duration here. Now with a successful liftoff, booster return, and spacecraft deployment, want to go ahead and take a look at where this mission lands once again for SpaceX. And the SpaceX's launch stats, this was the 72nd Falcon mission for SpaceX in 2023. This was the 8th Falcon Heavy to date, the 15th landing of Falcon Heavy boosters, this was the 206th Falcon reflight to date, the 270th total Falcon launch, combining both Falcon Heavy and Falcon 9 missions. This was the 87th Falcon launch in the last 365 days, the 70th SpaceX launch from Launch Complex 39A, getting close to being the most flown from Launch Complex 39A, although it does have a, a little bit of work left to do before it catches up to the total number of space shuttles that launched from here. There were 82 shuttle missions that lifted off from 39A. SpaceX again, now with 70 of its own between its Falcon Heavy and Falcon 9 rockets. This was the 163rd total launch from this particular pad, and this was the 56th launch from Florida in 2023.
And so that's going to go ahead and do it for us for today. Again, really appreciate all of you who uh, joined us for live launch coverage, who were here throughout a very busy Friday morning. As it is always busy here on the Space Coast, we are also tracking the Starlink 6-22 mission, which uh, scrubbed earlier in the week due to high upper-level winds. That mission uh, potentially going as early as later on tonight, but we'll keep tabs on that, so be sure to watch our social media, both on Threads as well as on X, formerly Twitter, for the updates on the Starlink 6-22 mission. That'll be the next one coming up. That Falcon 9 still sitting pretty over on SpaceX's other pad, Space Launch Complex 40 over at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. There are now three Falcon boosters over at the Cape right now. The one for Starlink 6-22 as well as the two side boosters that launched and landed for this mission. So a very Falcon heavy Cape Canaveral Space Force Station at the moment. Taking one last look at our live chat real quick. I want to thank uh, Robert Suter for a $10 Super Chat donation saying, uh, great coverage, thanks. Well, thank you, Robert, for supporting the coverage and for being one of the many people with us this morning. So glad you could join us. And that'll do it for us today. For Stephen Young, Adam Bernstein, who's been hard at work on the tracking cameras, as well as Michael Kane, who's been providing some still photography. You'll see some of that as well as Adam's shots as they go to retrieve their remote cameras, but already got some stuff posted up on spaceflightnow.com as well as our feed on X. I'll leave you with a shot of very happy control room as Psyche continues on its journey just at the beginning of its great odyssey to explore the Metal Ridge asteroid of the same name. So for all of us here at Space Flight Now, we'll continue to keep our eyes on Psyche as it goes along its multi-year quest. But for now, we'll sign off. I'm Will Robinson-Smith, and we will see you next time.